For this stenciling demo, we have a large format stencil. This is a beautiful stencil that Plaid put out with this gorgeous stag head. And we're going to stencil it onto a little bamboo cutting board that we're going to make into a wall plaque. And if you have a piece of raw wood, you might want to lightly sand it um, to get it ready for the paint. We think this finish looks just fine for our paint here today. And we're going to use a special kind of brush that's just for stenciling. This is a foam paintbrush. It's round. It's called a pouncer, or Plaid calls it a spouncer. And we like it because you use it just straight up and down. It works perfectly for stencils. We'll show you how to use that. And we're going to use a matte paint. Uh, this one's actually a satin paint. You can use a matte paint or a satin paint. Matte paint is good because it doesn't leak as much under stencil. This satin paint also is fairly dry, and so we think it works well with the stencils. And we have a little bit of masking tape. What we like to do first is center the stencil onto the work surface, whatever you're stenciling on. And this stencil is bigger than our project, so it's a little hard to see. But I can feel it from top to bottom. And I can also slide it down like this so I can see from left to right how centered it is. And it looks like just eyeballing it, that that's about the center. And I'm gonna slide it straight up, and then I can feel top to bottom that I have about the same overlap. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of masking tape on the bottom here, and a little on the top, just so it doesn't move while we're trying to stencil. That's the two most important things for stenciling are that you don't want the stencil to move, and you don't want the paint to leak under the edge of the stencil. So, the tape will take care of the moving, and then I'll show you the trick for making sure that your paint doesn't seep under. What we're gonna do is we're gonna load the brush up with paint. This is our teal paint here. And you can see it's pretty dry paint. It's not uh, runny. If you picked a color and you put it out on your palette here and it was runny, I think you should think twice about using that paint color. Maybe do a test with it, because if it's very wet, it'll want to leak underneath here, and so you don't want that. So I'm going to take this pouncer paintbrush, and I'm kind of rotating as I go, so that I have paint all the way around it. So there's a lot of paint on there, and that's way too much paint. We're really going to use a dry paint technique, so then I'm going to, after I, it's called unloading or uh, loading the brush. Now I'm going to offload the paint. So I'm actually going to remove the paint from the pouncer. There's a lot on the edge. I'm going to remove some from the edge. I want it to be evenly loaded onto the foam paintbrush and fairly dry. Now to get started, I'm just going to pounce or bounce this paintbrush straight up and down. What I don't want to do is push the paint off of the brush. I want to just let the paint come off the brush right onto the surface. It's going to cling to the stencil first before it makes it down into the work surface. I'm using my fingers to hold this piece down. This piece is unattached, so it wants to bounce up now. I'm just going to let it hold it still, and then I'm just going to layer the paint on. And the more times I go up and down like this, the more paint I get onto the surface. That's looking very good. And it's so dry, it's not seeping underneath. I just go up and down like that. I'm gonna be patient and just let the brush do the work. I'm not squishing it, just tapping it. And then I'm just gonna move through the stencil until I get every part of it covered with the paint. If you get to a point where you feel like there's not enough paint anymore on your brush, like I'm getting less and less now, we can go back and we can reload the brush. But remember, once you load it up with paint, you're going to want to offload it again. You really want it very dry, making sure it's not on the edges there. And I'm just going to go back, holding the stencil down with my fingers, and just tap, tap, tap. Load up the brush a little bit, unload the brush a little bit, and then keep tapping. 
And as I'm tapping, I'm rotating this foam paintbrush a little bit, just turning it a tiny bit because the paint is in different locations. It's come off on the stencil and maybe it's still loaded on the other side. And so I'm rotating and I'm getting more paint off of the dry brush that way. But not pushing, not forcing the paint off the brush, just letting it come off. You can really see that the more times you go over it, the darker the color gets, and that's how you're going to layer that paint on slowly. Not try and get it all done in one squish, which would give you bleeding. And you might get some bleeding anyway, it's hard to know, but that's also part of stenciling. It's not a big deal, but we just want to minimize that so that the stencil can look as good as it can. That's the whole point of using the stencils is that you get this beautiful decorator look this great graphic that somebody else has designed and you get to use it any way you want. I'm going to need more paint. Squeeze out a little paint and then it's going to be very wet. So again, I'm going to load it up. I'm rotating it in there, really loaded with paint. So I'm going to offload the paint here. I want it much drier than that. And then I'm just going to hold this down, go back here, and bounce it up and down, straight up and down. It's okay if the stencil bounces up and down a little bit. I'm holding it down a little bit, but it can bounce up and down. It's going to land in the same spot each time. That's fine. And as you can see, I'm really focusing on the edges where the stencil meets the project. That's the most important part of the painting, because that's where you're going to see the outline. This inside part, I can just go back and fill in with this sponge paintbrush and just make sure it's an even coat. But I mainly work around the edges of the stencil itself. Get that part done, and then I can go back in and fill in the middle part. We've tried this with a regular foam paintbrush that isn't shaped like this. It does not work as well. You really want this round pouncer brush. It looks like we're done, but before I remove the stencil, I just want to double check and look around my edges. All those edges are done. It's a tiny bit light color here. I'm going to give that just a dab more paint. These edges look good. Around here, and then I'm just going to check my antlers. Those look good. And then this is one of the questions we get the most is, do you remove the stencil while it's wet or wait for it to dry? And we remove it while it's wet. I'm just gonna take the tape up here. I'm gonna peel away the stencil here. Move these guys out of the way. And there's our beautiful stag stenciled on wood. Mm -hmm.